Hello and welcome to A Critical Dragon where I talk about narrative in film, television and in books. And this is going to be another one of those videos where I talk about narrative in general, about reading in general. And, and this one is about approaches to reading, styles of reading, how it relates to speed and what are the pros and cons of these different ways of reading. So the first one I want to talk about is cheating. And that would be looking at a study guide, looking at a synopsis, looking at a summary where someone has already read the book for you. They've gone through and they have highlighted and outlined in the barest of detail the key events from a text. So if you think when I talked about narrative kernels and satellites, what this person has done for you is they've gone through the text and they have selected what are all of the key, most important aspects and scenes. And of course, these summaries um, can be quite detailed or they can be very, very spare. You know, there's a whole spectrum of them. But Again, this is focusing on what someone else has deemed important, what someone else has deemed as the, the most essential information to be taken from a text. And, you know, that's one way of doing it. You can you can skim read like the, the uh, study guides for all of these various books and it'll give you a general sense of what the book is about. But really, it, it's not going to give you a reading experience. Then we move on to the perhaps the fastest way of getting through a novel or getting through a play and that's skim reading and skim reading is when you are actively going through the page as quickly as possible looking for key points you're not engaging with the text you're basically scanning it you're looking at it to see if anything leaps off the page at you you're trying to find key events uh, you dip in and out of the text you're not really reading every word you're not engaging with every sentence or paragraph or quite often even any chapter. You're, you're going through it very quickly just to get a general sense of what the major or most important things are. And skim reading is obviously exceptionally handy as a technique, as a skill, when you've already read something once, twice, whatever number of times, and you're looking for something in particular. You're like, I'm looking for a quotation. So you just scan down through it because you know it, you can kind of vaguely remember it. So you scan down through the sections until you can see that character name or the start of the quotation and you go, ah, there, I find it. It's a very, very useful technique, but it's not really a great technique for enjoying a book. And that's why we, we don't tend to skim read when we are reading a novel for enjoyment or even for study. We want to actually engage with it. And the next sort of speed to down from skim reading would be speed reading. And speed reading is a technique that is an accelerated form of normal reading, the normal reading pace that you have. And there are a number of different ways that you can learn how to do this. And there are applications that you can get on your phone or on a computer where it, it shows you the words in a sentence one at a time and you can slowly build up the speed at which you're seeing these words so that you're building up your ability to recognize words and move on to the next sentence and you can build up your speed very very easily using this technique. Another way of doing it is to have basically a sentence length cut out on a blank piece of paper, have your book, Put the blank piece of paper over it and start looking at sentences and just moving down. Another way of doing that, if you don't want to go to the effort of cutting a slit out of out of a piece of paper, having a ruler, a slide rule that is um, opaque and you move that down the page so you can't see the next thing and you just look at the sentence and you move it down and you try to be consistent with the speed that you're doing it so then over time you can increase that speed over and over again until eventually you can get rid of the ruler and it's just how you read. Oscar Wilde, uh, who had basically a photographic memory, an eidetic memory, used to read by, he would hold the book and he would read down one page by just dragging his finger down it so he was basically tracing a line with his eye down the center of the page relying on his peripheral vision to see the start and the end of the sentence at the same time, drag his finger down the page, then move on to the next page. And he could do it exceptionally quickly. Oscar Wilde could read very, very quickly. Now, that all sounds great. You go, oh, imagine all of the books that I can get through. But one of the things that you have to remember about reading is there is a difference between understanding the words on the, or getting the words off the page into your brain through, through whatever medium and understanding them because reading is not just about the data the information on the page it's about understanding the data on the page so think of it this way uh, if the information on the page it's information 
but knowledge is actually information plus understanding the information. So when you're speed reading, the time that it takes for you to get the words off the page and into your brain, you can greatly accelerate that. But you also have to work on the ability for your brain to process that information so that you can understand it. And what typically we find is the faster we read, that yes, we can pick up on narrative kernels, we can pick up on key events, we can pick up on what our brain is sort of going, this is the most important information. And you're looking at that very surface level um, and in a non pejorative sense, superficial level of information. You're not thinking about the text deeply, you're just going through the surface level, the descriptions, the the top level of information and you're not giving your brain time enough to actually process it to think about it to put it in connection or uh, in context of other bits of information in the book so with speed reading one of the techniques to sort of combine both of these things is you speed read a section and then pause and think about it and relate it back to previous sections that you've read and then you speed read the next section and pause and think about linking it back to previous sections, previous books, other concepts. But you give your brain that time to process what you have just read, to think about it, to understand it. And that gives you the knowledge of the text. Because otherwise, if you're not giving your brain that time, quite often you just end up with a version of skimming. It's more comprehensive than skimming. You'll have more in-depth or a more accurate and comprehensive knowledge of what happened, but you won't necessarily understand the importance of what happened. So then we can move to what we all normally do, which is how we normally read. And that's we start top left, move across and towards the bottom. Western style of reading, obviously manga, uh, top right, bottom left. So you, you read in those directions. And typically when we first start reading, we read one word at a time in a sentence, and quite often we vocalize it in our in our heads. What we develop as we practice reading more is instead of sounding out the words in our head, so reading at a speaking pace, we actually just understand the words and we don't need to sound it out in our head anymore. And then what we start doing is building up saying groups of words together and taking it all in at once that we don't need to look at each individual word as it appears in the sentence that we start looking at sentences and that's how basically you build up from ordinary reading toward speed reading but one of the great advantages of reading at a slightly more sedate pace is that as you are reading you can actually your brain can be ticking away in the background and thinking about the text understanding the text making points of connections and that helps us with knowledge of the text, not just the information that occurs, but actually understanding of that information. And that's one of the big advantages of being slightly slower in your pace. Now, obviously, the more you practice something, the, the faster that you get at it. And that is absolutely fine, absolutely accurate, brilliant, fantastic. And that's one of the things that we always aim to do, to find a balance between the reading speed, how quickly we are going through the words, and how quickly we are understanding, thinking, conceptualizing them in our brain afterwards. Because there's no point in being able to blaze through an entire book in an hour and go, oh, well, yeah, I'm done, and then not actually understand it. It would be like reading Animal Farm blazing through it incredibly quickly, getting to the end and going, oh, well, that was an interesting fable about pigs. Because if you do that, you've missed the point of the book because you haven't been taking the time to think about it. And then depending on how good your memory is, whether you take whole sections, whole chapters, whole books, as that's your pause point and you think back on it and you reconceptualize the whole thing. So then we get into a slightly slower mode of reading. And again, all of when I'm talking about speed here, this is all relative because the more you do something, the faster it actually gets. But if we talk about active reading, and you've heard me kind of talk about this before, there are lots of different terms for this, but it is essentially active reading, where when you're reading the sentence, you're taking your time, you're actually thinking about, there's a word, why that word, what are the connotations of that word? 
and as you're reading along you're you're not stopping you're not rereading whole chunks or rereading whole sections but you pause and sometimes when you read a sentence and you you see particular words stick out you pause you think about the words and then you carry on and this is obviously slower than just reading through and getting on to the next section an act of reading is trying to uh, increase the amount of time that your brain is thinking about the words on the page and reduce the amount of time that um, you're getting through the text. So increasing the ratio of the amount of time that you're thinking about the book to uh, the amount of time that you're actually reading the book. And I know in the modern day, we're time poor, we're trying to get through things. But when we do that, we can start focusing on things like subtext and connotations and points of connection and symbolism and metaphor and thinking about things in the abstract where if we read one story again like animal farm and we're reading it through and we go huh as i'm reading this i'm getting a real sense that this is a a fable and a fable is a type of story moral blah 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 you know we understand what a fable is and it's, it's a an animal fable about the history of communism in in the USSR in Russia and about the death of Lenin, the uh, point of contention between Trotsky and Stalin and how that has been played out in this fictional, slightly simplified form. And then we can think about it in more abstract terms, in more generalized terms and think about it as power corrupts. And we do that as we read through that we find these points of connections and we don't just look at it as boxer is a literal horse doing something we start if we start thinking about what boxer might represent as we are reading so that's what active reading is it's just taking that time as you're going through to slow down take a breath and think about what you're reading not just par through to find out what happens next and then we get to the slowest form of reading and this is close reading and obviously i have a lot of examples of this on the the channel and close reading is typically associated with poetry because of the density of information, the complexity of information that you have. And but in essence, it's active reading, but slowed down even further, where you're going backwards and forwards through the text, where you're looking at a sentence and then going back and looking at keywords in a sentence and then carrying on to finish the paragraph and then going back and then looking at different uh, words through the paragraph and then looking at a previous paragraph to see if there's continuity that you're moving backwards and forwards through the text this is not about processing the narrative events this is about understanding this is where you're spending a huge amount of time thinking about the text and less time actually sort of moving through the text and reading it and obviously the advantage of this is you gain an enormous understanding of the text you, you start look you start identifying and understanding the use of techniques how things are accomplished you're picking up on subtext you're seeing themes develop and it's much easier to identify them when you take a section you read it you reread it so now you're not worried about what's happening in the section you know what's happening in the section and then you start going through it word by word line by line paragraph by paragraph and then you start jumping backwards and forwards between paragraphs an incredibly slow way to read a book and to be honest not particularly fulfilling when you want to find out what's going to happen in the story and that's why active reading you can actually do as you're reading a story it just takes you a wee bit longer but with all of these techniques with all of them the more you practice them the faster they get to a certain extent because there are going to be limitations so if you start practicing something like active reading, it will slow down what you think of as your normal speed of reading. But the more you practice active reading, the closer that's going to become or get back to what you used to think of as your normal speed of reading. And in fact, if you continue to practice active reading, it may speed up past what you thought of as your normal speed of reading. It's exactly the same with close reading. The more you practice it, the very first couple of times you do it, it can be incredibly slow. It can be very frustrating. And you're going back through and you can spend an entire hour dissecting a single paragraph. Again, I have videos about this, 
But the reason my videos are so long is I'm trying to explain it to other people. Whereas when I'm doing it myself, this is something I was trained to do. This is something I, was pr I have practiced. And therefore, when I'm doing it, quite often, a lot of that information is actually happening at the speed that I generally read. Slower, yes. When I'm doing close reading, it has to be slower. I need time for my brain to think about it. But it's not, it doesn't take me an hour to read two paragraphs. It takes me an, an hour to explain six paragraphs, but it would only take me a short time to read them. And I can make those points of connections because I am used to doing it. It's my brain is on an automatic pilot processing the information. As with speed reading, the more that you speed read and the more that you're comfortable with speed reading, the more your brain gets used to processing the information. So you can actually develop better insight into the text. It's just more difficult the faster you go and you have to work at it. So if you're interested in um, processing a novel to find its key narrative events, you can read through very, very quickly. And yeah, you'll find out what happened in the in the story. The slower you read quite often, the more you will actually understand about what's happening in a story. And the reason all of this is important, not only are these different techniques that have these strengths and weaknesses, but if we read tradition, uh, if we read normally, uh, the, the normal approach that we take to reading is one of these modes that is going to color our expectations about what a book should be doing. So if you're used to getting through books as quickly as possible in order to focus on what happens, you are going to be focusing on narrative events and not necessarily thinking about characterization and theme and subtext and context and nuance and subtly, uh, subtlety that you'll be blazing through to get the main key points of what happened. The slower you read, the more time that you take about these things, the more you're going to be engaged with all of those other aspects and maybe not so focused on the story elements because you're interested in all of the other things. And the thing is, if you're quite happy reading a book more than once, read through it the first time quickly as possible to get a general sense of it. And then you take a slower approach through it to see how it was done when there isn't that impetus to find out what happens next. But it can have a huge impact on how we approach text and what we think should or should not happen in texts. And of course, this has a direct relation to how we perceive pacing, how we perceive narrative events, because if we are focused on the big things happening and big things don't happen, we may think that that section drags when there's actually really interesting stuff about characters talking. We go, but they're not talking about the big events. Yeah, but they're talking. So we get a sense of who these characters are and they're chatting about things and it, it fleshes out the world and it gives us a sense of what's going on and it makes the world seem more alive. And some readers will go, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in what's going to happen next. Other, in, other readers will be interested in, no, I want a more immersive experience. And so that's why we balance these different techniques. That's why they are useful in different situations. But if we, if we think to ourselves, this is the way that we have to do it. This is the only way to do it. This is how I read. We are limiting the different approaches and ways to think about narrative. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll uh, see you in the next one.